Now I'm going to introduce you to syntax files. Um, there's really two ways to do analysis in SPSS or any statistics uh, program, applied statistics program. You can use the drop-down menus or you can use syntax. There are advantages and disadvantages of each. The main advantage of the drop-down menus is that you don't have to know any commands um, and that you can hunt for the command uh, that, or, or the, the analysis that you want without knowing a lot about the program. The problem with using the drop-down menus exclusively is that um, if you want to go back and make a change to your analysis, which is really common um, to want to do, you really can't do that without going and redoing the entire analysis. If, on the other hand, you use the syntax files, you can actually go back through and rerun the analysis without doing a lot of extra work. Um, there are a few syntax commands that it's useful to know. If I want to open a new syntax file, I can go to File, New Syntax. What syntax is is really, um, it's a set of commands to tell the uh, program what to do. SPSS is considered a fourth generation computer language, meaning that um, it's for a specialized task, in this case applied statistics, and it's pretty far removed from the actual underpinnings of the um, operating system in the computer. Um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that's complicated and that you don't have to worry about. So. As soon as I open a syntax file, I can write a bunch of commands in um, the SPSS syntax language and then save this file and have it for use later. Now in this um, tutorial, I'm going to choose a variable um, as an example. The variable I'm going to choose is attend. Um, GSS respondents are asked how often they attend uh, religious services. The question, if I look in variable view, attend, variable number 39. I look at the values and value labels. The responses that are allowed range from never to more than once per week. There are a total of nine meaningful responses, and there's also nine for um, if the person doesn't know or doesn't give any answer. If you know about um, surveys, you know that um, you know, obviously the respondent can't be coerced into answering the question. They should feel free to say don't know or, or not answer. On the other hand, missing data is um, really can be a plague on the um, researcher in terms of just um, dramatically reducing the number of cases that they have available. So the interviewers are trained to really try to get an answer from just about everyone. And it's pretty surprising in the general social survey what they're able to get people to answer in a 90-minute in a period. Here we can see that don't know and no answer is really not a meaningful value. So what we want to do is tell SPSS that that's the case. So what I can do is declare missing values for attend, and the missing value would be 9, because 9 is don't know or no answer. Every SPSS syntax command ends with a period. You'll note that. Um, as soon as SPSS recognizes commands, then they turn blue. Uh, the variable stays uh, black, but the, the, ba the main command goes from red to blue as soon as SPSS um, recognizes it. That's one way you know if you wrote the command uh, incorrectly, if you misspelled it, that it doesn't turn blue. I can then highlight the command and click the little arrow 
or I can press Control R to have SPSS run the command. In the output screen, you'll see the command will echo back out at you. Um, how do you know that this command worked? Well, you don't get an error message. And if I go back to variable view, now I can see that for the variable attend, 9 is now included as a missing value. What does this mean? Values that are declared as missing will then not be used in the analysis. So SPSS will not interpret it. Um, if you don't properly handle missing data, you can end up getting into trouble because SPSS will essentially will interpret the nines as meaning somebody who attends church uh, or other religious services a, uh, a lot more than anybody else, and this is obviously wrong because the people who have nine are people you just don't have a, uh, a meaningful answer to the question. The next um, simplest command that one can use is frequencies command that tells you basically the number of people in each category and the percentages of people in each category. This is the kind of thing that SPSS is particularly good at. Uh, one thing that it's better at than, for example, um, Excel. So if I look at a frequencies of attend, highlight that command, click the arrow, I should get a table in the output screen like this. And it ranges the, the values and uh, value labels are arrayed here in the left hand uh, column of the table. You have the frequencies, which is the number of people in each category. The percent, which includes not only the people who answered the question, but also people who didn't. And the valid percent, which is really, these are really the numbers you want to pay attention to. What does this mean? This means that 16.1% of the sample said, uh, reported that they never attended religious services. 7.8% reported attending less than once per year. 13.2% reported attending once a year and so on, down to 7.8% of people responded that they attended more than once per week. You can see also that 1% um, of the sample here is missing. That doesn't mean in this case that 1% didn't answer the question because uh, it's possible also that just due to survey um, mistakes by the by the uh, interviewers that they just weren't answer, weren't asked the question, but this question was asked and answered by almost everybody.